A new competitor to Apple's Siri voice-controlled personal assistant launches Monday. It's called Viv, and it's actually been developed by the creators of Siri. Joining us now to talk about this new voice-controlled assistant is Michael Learmonth. He's the editor of Tech, Media, and Culture at the International Business Times. Michael, thanks for joining us. I guess first off, what would set Viv apart from Siri and other voice-controlled digital assistants? Do we need another one? <laughs> yeah, well, well, this was sort of the original vision of Siri because these are the guys behind it. You know, they sold their original company, Siri, to Apple in 2010 and almost immediately realized that Apple was going to turn it into a basically an extension of Apple's walled garden, you know, to connect to Apple's uh, apps and services or just to send you to Google. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 their vision is to do, you know, do a voice assistant that kind of is, is open and kind of uh, brings, brings all services and doesn't depend on an ecosystem. Hmm. So do you think that there's enough there then to convince Siri users to make a switch? Those that maybe, you know, don't really care if it's, if it's open on the back end and just simply want to use it? I think that's a huge hurdle for this. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it kind of feels like a company that was built to be bought, uh, just like Siri was. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a little bit hard to imagine, you know, launching a new consumer product broadly. Um, especially when you've got, you know, Alexa out there, Siri, you've got Google Now, Facebook bots. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things trying to chat, chat to you in the home right now. And, you know, uh, you know, not having devices and not being built into anything is, is a huge hurdle. Hmm. So that's one of the hurdles. But are there other big challenges? I mean, after all, these voice-controlled systems aren't widely used by consumers just yet, except for my mother. She talks to Siri all the time. <laughs> you know, I, I think we may be slightly overestimating how much people want to talk to things. You know, I mean, smartphones really aren't, aren't used much for, co for calls so much as, as data and, and, and messaging. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the Turing test is, is that could, could I talk to this robot as if it were a person? You know, is, is that really something we should be holding our devices to? You know, sometimes a conversation is a, is a less efficient way to get information or to get things done. Huh, very interesting. I never really thought about having a conversation with my devices, but now that you put it that way, it seems to make sense. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us. I appreciate you being here and your thoughts, and thank you all for watching. I'm Courtney Reagan. Have a great day. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.